Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. In case you don't know me, my name is Corinne Carson and I'm the Marketing and Communication Manager at Working Theater. Uh, if you don't know Working Theater, welcome. We are in our 39th season and we exist to create theater for, about, and with working people. So our programming, our shows like Fish, as well as our educational programming like Theater Works, which runs um, performance education classes for working people in unions and our commissioning program for working people outside of the arts. Um, we are so excited to be co-producers with Keen, who brought us this fantastic show from Kia. And we're so lucky to be in conversation with all of you this morning and Marcia. Um, and so I will pass it over to Ashley from Keen to introduce themselves and let you know how this morning will run. Hello, welcome. Um, yes, I'm Ashley DeGiorgi from Keene Theatre Company. I'm the managing producer there. Uh, Keene is a fellow off-Broadway company with Working. We're excited to be co-producing. Uh, Keene is in our 24th season. We create theater that connects through intimate productions of plays and musicals. We have an education program called Keene Teens, as well as several new work initiatives, one of which is our Keene Playwrights Lab, which Keene participated in in 2018. Um, we are very excited to be bringing Fish to Off Broadway with the Working Theater. Fish is currently playing at Theater Row uh, until April 20th. We're going to drop a link in the chat a little later so you can grab your tickets. Um, but we are excited to have these two wonderful artists here to chat. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Marcia Pendleton, who you all probably already know. She's the founder of Walk Tall Girl Productions. She has a radio show on WBAI. She's sort of a legend in the community and we're excited to have you all chatting. So we will see you later for a Q&A, which you can put in that Q&A box. I think some of you had already found, but in the meantime, um, I'm happy to uh, hear what Kia and Marcia get up to. So thanks. Thank you, Ashley and Corinne. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, Kia? I'm good. How are you, Marcia? I'm doing well. Thank you so Same much Brian. for agreeing to participate in this, this conversation. So let's just jump right in um, to talk a little bit about your background. Um, where are you from and how did you begin to write? When did your love affair with writing begin? Uh, I grew up in a small town in Western Maryland. It's actually the skinny part of Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like I can walk from my house to West Virginia in like 10 minutes. And, um, uh, and actually, um, if I want to start the beginning my father worked in a paper mill so he was always bringing home like reams of paper and pencils and pens and once in a while a stapler and so actually when I was very little I played by making little stories and books because uh you know and stapling them when we had the stapler to make a book because um because that's what was around to play with I mean that's we had toys too <laughs> but we also had all those um supplies because they worked in the paper mill and so it kind of started there when I was very little. Okay. And what kind of stories would you like to tell when you were writing when you were little? When I was little, they could be anything. <laughs> um, uh, I remember this. I remember mainly because it was a story in the second grade Uh and the teacher asked us to write about my best friend. And I wrote, my best friend is my mother. I mainly remember it because my mother was so pleased. <laughs> my teacher mm -hmm. told her. And um, and I didn't think anything about it because she was my best friend. So I didn't really think any, like, I didn't think it was any big deal. I remember once writing about, because I remember the picture I drew of a dragon that I got from a trip to the moon or something. And it came back with this little creature. So they could be anything sort of imaginative things. Um, but by the time I grew up um, and the first, the first uh, playwriting I pl class I took was the last semester of college. And by then I started writing about social justice issues and it wasn't any, um, 
conscious decision to do that. It's just, that's where my interests were. So that's where I began doing that and have been ever since. Where did you go to college? What was your... Uh, undergrad, actually I went the first two years, a cup, a place called, it was, when, it was then called Frostburg State College. Now mm-hmm. it's a, called a university that was not far from where I grew up, up in the mountains. Uh, but then the last two years, I went to the University of Maryland outside of DC, the big University of Maryland. And I worked in DC area a few years. And then I came to Columbia for graduate school in, um, in theater arts, in playwriting. And that's how I came to New York. Okay. I went to the University of Maryland College Park. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was in the graduate program, MFA in oh. management at the time. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Huge campus. Huge, huge campus. <laughs> I was there very recently because before, just before Fish, I had, um, it's very strange to have two back-to-back world premiere productions, but it's partly because the pandemic, because the other one should have happened mm-hmm. a couple of years ago. And it was at Arena Stage in D.C. And while I was there, I went uh, at, at one point I was driving uh, in a car, driving by the University of Maryland. And yeah, it had changed so much in all these years because mm-hmm. it's always continually growing. Still has that big M but, um, mm-hmm. um, by uh, Route 1. But uh, but yeah, it's yeah, it's enormous. Okay. And one other question. Why is it that you write? What inspires you to write? Well, I, as I said, I don't know, I can't exactly say why, because I've been doing it since I was little and it was Mm -hmm. just something. Uh, But what inspires me is social, social justice issues that I want to say something about, um, you know, like I often watch democracy now, but that isn't my only source. And um, if there's something that um, I feel like I, you know, need to say something about this issue, um, uh, my small contribution to addressing it, then that's the way I can best address it. Okay. Let's move into talking about the play, uh, Fish. Um, why did you write it? What inspired you to to write the play? And what is it about? Yes. So it addresses the contemporary public school system. And it, it, it's actually, it's hard to say, to answer that question, because there's a side of me that feels that... Um, Everybody should be concerned about whether you have kids or not. I don't have kids, but whether or not uh, you do that, this is, you know, the future of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel that it's always politicized and um, everybody, most everybody has their opinions about it. And I felt that um, I wanted to address um, particularly um, children in poverty or some level of poverty and um and and yeah what they have to um the the system that they are placed in and I and it was also important to me to address the struggles that teachers face and so while, if there is a protagonist, it's a high school senior, a girl, uh, if if you were to say there was a protagonist, but in some level you could think of it as dual protagonist because there's also a teacher and, um, and the journey that she takes through the story. Okay, and also um, what inspired you to to tell this particular story at this particular time? I can't say that it's this particular time because I feel like that's an issue that's sort of ongoing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, So I can't exactly say exactly. So in 2018, um, Keen has their Playwrights Lab or for mid-career playwrights, they take three playwrights every year through the calendar year. So we started at the top of the year and in December, there was a public reading of what we worked on. And at that time I was inspired, inspired uh, to, uh, 
to address the public school system. And so I use that venue, um, bringing in work and uh, discussing it with the other playwrights. One one of the other two um, had children. And so it was interesting also getting uh, her take on some of the things that I was writing about. And so, um, yeah, yeah, it was just a timing thing. And then uh, Jonathan Silverstein, the artistic director, was very taken with the play. Uh, only in the last year or two did I, you know, a couple of years that I realized that it was something that he really wanted to produce and he wanted to find a producing partner. And that's how um, the working theater came in. It's very much, I think, part of their mission too, because um, probably the whole thing, this, the, the, the students and the teachers, but certainly the teacher, because um, this is a working person and they have connections with uh, the teachers union. And so uh, so it all was a, was a good fit. Let's talk a little bit about your collaboration with the artists that are bringing this from the page to the stage. Let's start with your director, Adrian uh, D. Williams. Mm -hmm. What is what has it been like to collaborate with her? Uh, so let's go with that question first. Yeah, it's been great. Um, <laughs> there could be many productions where you would ask me that question, and I would not be able to say much because it wouldn't be so great. But I've known Adrian for decades. I mean, I can't remember where, I think she said we met at the old Circle Rep Lab, the uh, Circle Rep Theater, but, um, uh, but I just know we've known each other in theater circles for a long time. And, um, but it is our first time. Well, uh, let me take that back. We did collaborate, I guess it was a couple of years ago, but it was on a play. It was just a same day reading of the play. Um, so, this was a different play, um, but that was the only time we worked together before. And so, um, so yeah, it's really been wonderful because she's wonderful with the actors. Um, she is both patient and respectful of their process, but also pushes them when, when needed. And um, I, and I feel it is a playwright that we both, we're hearing each other in a really um, respectful and productive way. And so, so yeah, it's really been a good collaboration. What's it been like for you to watch your, the actors embody these characters, their, their development? What has that been like for you to, to witness? and hear your words coming out of their mouths. Again, we have a stellar cast. Sometimes I would be a little intimidated by that question if we didn't have such wonderful people, but the entire cast, they are all, like I feel very fortunate to have such a brilliant group, every single one of them. And um, that doesn't mean that you can have brilliant actors, but they may be going in a different direction, but, they're they're brilliant in talent, but also brilliant as um in terms of collaboration and are willing to go in different directions and take risks. And so um yeah, yeah. So sometimes it's wonderful to hear it the play overall as I intended. Um and in moments here and there, I'm going beyond what I intended. It's even better than I was thinking. And so, um, so yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, who are you most like? What is the character that you are most like? Are you like, are you like any of the characters in the, sh in, in the play, in the world of the play? I don't know that I would say I am like any of them on the whole, but I will say that Tree, who is the main character, the, the high school girl, um, she is a young woman who's dealing with a lot of um, personal struggles in her life. Um 
but deep in her heart, she has a curiosity and a love of learning, which is sort of expressed throughout, you know, in the course of the play, in the journey of the play. And that would probably be the closest to me if I had to pick one that, that, um, that, um, inner side of her that she often covers. How long has this this process from when you first put paper to pen or sat at the keyboard um, to to write Fish um, to this moment now where you're actually going into your third preview on uh, Off-Broadway? Uh, how long has that process taken? Yeah, well, as I said, we started early uh, 2018 is when I started this workshop. Mm -hmm. And over the course of that year, I wrote the play. Okay. So that's when it started. Now, by no means has it been since 2018, I've only done Fish. I wrote my second novel in that time. Um, and I worked on this play that's... Um, it's, that was done in D.C. at a at arena stage, this other play, um, which, by the way, came out of the research for Fish. That play was called In Tempestuous Elements, and it was about Anna Julia Cooper, who's a legendary Black D.C.-based teacher from around the uh, 1900. And so it was actually the research of Fish that, when I got the commission for Arena Stage, that's where that came from. Um among other things, you know, this other play that I that I worked on that I said I did with, you know, just a one day reading with Adrian. Mm -hmm. So um, so, yes, it's incubated since 2018, um, but going in and out in terms of working with it um, last fall, uh, the first week of October we did a workshop, like a one week workshop and, um, and that a fish. And that was really great to have a lot of, to hear it for the first time. I'm sorry, the second time, because I heard it with the, the, the reading way back in 2018. Um, but to hear it as I've rewritten it for the first time. And, um, and then I did some rewrites after the workshop and, uh, yeah. And now in rehearsal, I did some rewrites and I'm still doing some rewrites. And so it's always a process. The script is always a process, sometimes up until opening night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're a novelist. I have one of your books that is based on, I tried to make a connection between this book that you wrote and the Broadway production of Paradise Square. Oh, yeah. Moon in the Mars. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It is um, sitting right over there. So I will have you sign it when, when I come to the theater. Oh, yes. What is your process um, as a novelist and then talk about your process as a playwright? Yeah. Um, it was funny. This sort of, I became more conscious of this because this um, online literary magazine called Lit Hub had asked me to write about the differences. So it made a few years ago. So it sort of made me more conscious of it. Um, well, uh, you know, I can, I can be imaginative on the, the stage. So for example, I had a play once about a girl's gang that had fireworks and the designers just figure out how to do that. And there's um, also a sort of a dream magical thing that happens in fish that you'll see when you come there and the you know, designers just sort of figure out how to make those magical things happen. Um, but of course, with a novel, you can just go anywhere, you know, it's you can go all, all over the country or all over the world and um uh, and my novels, which also were not short novels, um, mm -hmm. there's that expanse. Um, so, um, in some ways, the biggest difference, because I found, I really found more, um, similarities than differences. And mm -hmm. the main similarity, even with my novels that are long, um, is that, you provide just, I feel like writing at its best, you provide just enough information for the reader or the audience to take it and fill in the rest. If you're not 
spoon feeding them so that they become an active participant, whether that's at a play or reading a book. Um, with a pl with a novel, of course, it's an intimate experience between the writer and the reader, um, barring a really bad editor that messes the book up. But um, as long as it's a good collaboration with your editor, it should just be a relationship between the writer and the reader. Um, but of course, with a play, there are so many more collaborators. So mm -hmm. um, so it will go through the director, go through the actors. And so if everybody is on the same page and everybody is a an artist of talent and integrity, it's, you know, it, if it is not that, if somebody is off, it can undermine the experience. But if the whole group is of talent and integrity and everybody's really working hard, it's theater is riveting in that way. And that's what's so exciting about it. And I do feel, um, I don't feel this way about every production, but I definitely feel that way about Fish challenges what are the what has been the greatest challenge to you when you write be it a play or be it a novel um you know i have to think about that because i i tend to like i'm not a writer's block type person i'll just write through it um, as a matter of fact, um, it's not that I'm not a procrastinator. It's that I procrastinate everything else in my life except writing. <laughs> so I, I used writing because I, I can't do the housework. I have to do right to write. Right. So, um, um, so challenges might be things like if I get stuck on the research and I am looking and looking and looking and I just, uh, you know, can't find the right thing. And then suddenly it'll pop up, hopefully, uh, at some point. Um, okay, well, be, okay, now let me, that's the writing itself. Now, the business is, I definitely have plays that are, you know, in the drawer that have never been produced because, you know, the right producer was not found or, and so um, when you write a novel, of course you want it published, but it is complete in itself, whether it's published or not, you hope to get it published, but it is complete in itself. When you write a play, it's not complete until it's on the stage it's it's a a script and so um and so that is a challenge certainly in in theater is finding the right producer for every play you know to see if that can you know, to make that happen and it can be you know it could be that you no producer really likes this play or it could be that there are too many characters or, you know, it's just too expensive or, you know, there are so many different reasons and um, or the producer loves the play, but doesn't think it's right for their audience. You know, there are so many things. And so, um, yeah, that could be a challenge. How do you handle those kinds of disappointments? You know, when things don't quite work out, where the novel is not published, where the play is not produced. How do, how do you um, move forward from there? I just keep writing and okay. go to the next project. I mean, if, um, yeah, I could just be, I could have just written one play my whole life that never got produced if I would just get, you know, stuck in despair about that happening. But instead you move on, to the next thing. And um, in some ways, to tell you the truth, um, frankly, it's more disappointing to me often when I when it does get produced, but something is off. And so it was produced, but it wasn't what I intended. It just went off the rails somehow. And that's actually more disappointing because I don't know if I'll get another production. Whereas those ones in the drawer, maybe one day I will get it and it could go right.
why do you want people to come see fish? What do you want to them, the audience, to get from uh, witnessing uh, this particular world that you've created? Um, I there's there's a whole lot about the public school system. Again, everybody has their thoughts about it, but there's a whole lot that I think people don't know and aren't thinking about um, or are simplifying. And so I really hope it starts dialogue, discussion, and that that can, you know, lead to action in some ways because, um, yeah, to see what, we can do to um to do right by our young people okay um ashley do we have any questions we do we have a several awesome questions if you don't mind my feeding some to you uh so let's hear them um we have a question about the research um part did you speak to any teachers in that research part I did. I mean, it's been a while now because because the process has been so long. You know, you know, I should take it back, um, Marcia. It was even before 2018, I think, because I've been thinking about it for a while and I spoke with some teachers. I think it was even before that. Um, but I didn't actually start the writing of it. So I can't exactly say when this all started, but I didn't actually start putting pen to paper until 2018. And so, yes, I spoke to uh, some students and some teachers in different rounds. You know, some of them were um, from poorer schools. Some of them, um, I went to Stuyvesant, which is like the fanciest public school, right? I was invited by a teacher there um, years ago, many years ago. Um, I myself did a week long um, playwriting class on Rikers Island, you know, the high school for incarcerated girls. And, um, and I, I, I've never been a full-time teacher, but I've done teaching gigs here and there, mostly in grad school, but different, different realms. But that may be the, my favorite class that I, that I ever taught um, because they had such stories to tell those girls and really wanted to tell them. And um, it was just a week, it was all day, but it was a week long, all, the, the whole school day, Monday through Friday. And and it was funny seeing these girls go through a similar process of professional playwrights because um, on Friday, we did a reading of um, uh, before the entire women's prison um, of their works. And um, and. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were great. Um, I think there was a little fight one day, but it was mostly great. Um, Thursday, suddenly it was getting all this attitude and it was completely the jitters because they mm -hmm. were so nervous at the plays. And so suddenly it became this whole other thing. And then Friday was just, I mean, it felt like a Hollywood movie because it was <laughs> so wonderful for everybody it was so happy and it was so um and I do make a very vague reference to, uh, or a very brief reference to, um, and uh, girls, incarcerated girls, um, in the public school system in the play. So, um, so yeah, um, but it was a very sort of scattered research of experience over many years that sort of led to it. Um, and then I read a couple of. I read several things, but two books in particular. One was called The Teachers, The Teacher Wars, um, which really had a lot to do with teachers. Um, and that's when I came across Anna Julia Cooper, the teacher from DC. Um gosh, Dana, gosh, I'm forgetting the name of that writer. And um Diane Ravitch, who was once an undersecretary of education, wrote a book that I read. And both those in terms of more the philosophy and um and and politics of teaching were really were really useful very useful for me okay do we have another one 
I do have a few more. Um, one uh, patron was wondering when the director came on board in the process, when Adrian Williams came on board. So it was last summer when I was, oh, sort of over spring summer, I guess we interviewed, I guess it was this summer for a few um, sort of Zoom interviewed a few directors and Adrian was one of them. And um, and it was a hard choice because there were several um really good uh, candidates, but for various reasons, including the fact that Adrian had gotten um, so many rave reviews from uh, from so many other people. And again, I had worked with Adrian once, so she was definitely, from the beginning, I had her on the, the radar, but we talked to a few people. But, um, but yeah, so she'd been on since summer. And then the first time we really got into the room was the first week of October, the workshop. So, I mean, um, we were talking before then, of course, uh, but yeah, yeah. And I just want to point out that Adrian is also an educator. Yes, and yes. She, she is also a, an educator. Yes, yes, very much. I mean, it's mostly uh, uh, college. And she right. actually grew up in the public school, in the New York public school system. Mm -hmm. um, but Juilliard, and I think she taught at NYU. And um, what's the what's the one on the east and the Upper East Side? Winter, I believe she Hunter? teaches that. Hunter, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely has, and 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 I should say that was because she teaches um and and directs at those schools. So when we were originally putting the workshop together, I mean, she knew, and we needed all these um young women who could play. Uh, high school girls, she was such a great resource because, you know, she taught all these wonderful um, theater programs, these wonderful actors that had come out of them and they were young. And so it was really, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we get another one? Sure. I have two more if you have time, Marcia. Yes, um, one of them, uh, one of the question that was submitted is about how you, um, what you kind of expect from an audience and previews, what you look for from an audience, what you get from previews that might change the the piece? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I, I like to, well, the main thing is I want to hear if they're engaged. And um, I, <laughs> I know we only have now, uh, there's like a one page program and then they can go online. But even with that, traditionally it was always that you know you're losing the audience if they're like looking through their programs right in the middle of the show and you if, if things were bad you could still hear them jiggling I don't hear the jiggling and towards the end I mean there there are very intense parts of the play there are also times when rhythmically you can get very quiet and so then you're listening are people being bored what's going on um but towards the end there would be moments where suddenly uh, everybody would laugh and i know okay they're still with it and um and certainly if you see them sort of wiping a tear or something so um so yeah all that is really useful information in terms of uh yeah, yeah, how much they're engaged. And also my myself, if, you know, I have jokes in the play, are they getting laughs? Um, if they're not, is that okay? Or is there something we need to do to make that happen? Um, and in a play, that's there's so much serious, intense stuff. The balance of that humor is important. The play has been in front of two audiences thus far. Yes. What has your response? What have you noticed about these two audience audiences that that um, really struck you? Yeah, um, well, it's actually kind of good because they were two very different audiences. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, um, the audience was almost full. I think it was pretty, yeah. And there were probably the second one. It was maybe a half that, um, and it felt like a very in both audiences, very positive, very engaged. Um, the first audience, and this also can be with the actors because it's the first performance and, you know, they're all, you know, the energy of that. Um, there was, yeah, it was, it, 
it felt there was an, you know, I felt very, it, there was an enthusiasm for the actors. Um, there was, a, it was actually a standing ovation, but um, I feel like in a play like this, it's not a, um, it's not like a musical where people just like jump to their feet and <laughs> clap, you know, because, you know, that was great songs and great dancing. It's not that type of thing. It's much more of uh if if it happens at all, you know, they stand. It's more gradual because they first have to the the emotions that you know they may not they may have really been engaged with the play, but not feel like standing at the end because it's just not necessarily that type of play. So the second audience was kind of half and half in terms of some standing and some not. But I don't. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, they didn't stand. They must have hated it. It's um, it's just not that type of play. It's always great when they stand. The mm -hmm. actors love it. It gives them that, you know, that encouragement. But um, but the most important thing is knowing their engagement. And I think thus far, um, they've been they've been engaged. So. Okay. And I think, Ashley, you have one more question for if us. That's, if that's okay. We have a, a great question about where the title fish comes from. Can you speak to that a little bit? The problem is it's a surprise. And so, <laughs> so um, if you want to know, you're going to have to come. And by the way, this is speaking of which this is really important information. It is a sliding scale. And so we really want everybody to be able to come. Now, there are, you know, a limited no number of discount tickets to every show. So, so buy them fast while they last. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, we really want, we don't want that to be a, um, uh, to, to keep for that to, to be an obstacle for anyone. And so, so please come and find out the mystery of the title, Fish. <laughs> Okay, Kia, what is your next project? My next project, that's so funny because uh, when I was in DC, it was this. Now, I don't know. <laughs> but mm -hmm. actually, that's not quite true. Um, I'm, I've been working on a third novel, so um, I, which has to do with a generations of Black farmers. And so mm -hmm. that's actually the once I get through this, I'm going to go back to that. So... Okay, that sounds really intriguing uh, because of everything that Black farmers have, mm -hmm. have and, uh, and, are, and continue uh, to go through. So we look forward to that. Um, one last question um, for you. I know you just said, you know, like, get your tickets, buy your tickets early. That's, that's a great thing. Um, <laughs> but please... Um, uh, please uh, invite the folks that we have uh, online here. Um, your person, give them your personal invitation to come to the show. And uh, Ashley, could you come back and uh, go through all the ways that people can get tickets? Please come to Fish. Yes, <laughs> it's running through April twentieth, and. Uh, um, yeah, as I say, we have a stellar cast. I feel really blessed to have them, uh, every one of them. It's, um, and it's not just me saying that I've had several audience members say almost in awe that, um, that there isn't a weak, a weak element in the cast at all. And so, um, yes, please come. Okay. Yes, I'll echo that. On behalf of King Company and, and Working Theater, we would love to see you there. Um, it's an incredible play we're both very proud to be producing. You can get tickets um, on King Company's website, on Working Theater's website. You can also call the box office. You can get them online. You can email me if you'd like, ashley at kingcompany.org if you have any questions. My information is also on the website. I've dropped the link in the chat as well. And as Marcia said, it's a choose what you pay model. Um, so if you don't see a price point that works for you, let us know. But there's many options, including a zero price ticket. Um, so yeah, we hope to see you at the theater. And thank you both so much. It's been such a lovely conversation. And I appreciate you both being here and sharing your time and talents this morning with us. So thank, thank you. you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Look
<laughs> we hope to see you all at the theater soon and have a lovely sun a Saturday. I know it's raining out there. So hopefully you're all cozy at home. With your coffee. Yeah, with your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.